In this video, I want to show you how to express a solution in interval notation. So let's say if you're given an inequality, let's say that x is greater than 4. Let's plot this solution on a number line, and then we're going to write the answer using interval notation. So let's say this is 0, and 4 is somewhere to the right of 0. And all the way to the right, if you keep on going, is positive infinity. Negative infinity will always be to the left. Now x is greater than 4 but not equal to 4 so therefore it does not include 4 so we need to use an open circle and because it's greater than 4 we need to shade to the right. Now to represent this solution used in interval notation it's going to be 4 to infinity but because 4 is not included we need to use parentheses so 4 comma infinity this tells us that x is greater than 4 but not equal to 4. And so that's how you can represent this particular solution using interval notation. Now let's try another example. Let's say if x is equal to or greater than 2. How do you think we should represent this solution using interval notation? Feel free to pause the video. Plot the solution on a number line then write it using interval notation. So let's put 0 in the middle. 2 is to the right of 0. On the left, we're going to have negative infinity as usual and positive infinity on the right. Now this time, it's equal to or greater than 2. So we need to use a closed circle as opposed to an open circle. But because it's still greater than 2, we're going to shade towards the right. So to represent this particular solution in interval notation, we're going to use brackets instead of parentheses to indicate that 2 is included. So anytime you have a closed circle, it's always going to be associated with a bracket. An open circle will always be associated with parentheses. And infinity is always associated with parentheses. So it's going to be from 2 to positive infinity. And that's the answer. Now let's look at another example. Let's say that x is less than 3. Try that one. Feel free to pause the video. So once again let's start with a number line. Let's put 0 in the middle and 3 is to the right of 0. And then let's put our infinity symbols which looks like a sideways 8. Now x is less than 3 but does not include 3 so we're going to use an open circle at 3. But because it's less than we're going to shade this time to the left as opposed to the right. Now when you need to write the answer in interval notation, you should write it from left to right. Basically just write the way you see it. So the first number is negative infinity, that's the number on the left. The number on the right where the blue line ends is 3. So it's from negative infinity to 3. Now as we said before, you should always use a parentheses symbol next to an infinity symbol. And we have an open circle, so that's going to be associated with a parentheses. So this is the answer. It's negative infinity to, neg I mean, to positive 3. Try this one. Let's say that x is less than or equal to negative 1. Go ahead and take a minute and work on that one. So let's start with a number line. So here's 0. Negative 1 is to the left of 0. Now let's put the infinity symbols. So this time it includes negative 1. So we're going to use a closed circle. And because it's less than negative 1, let's shade to the left. So the left side has negative infinity and the right side has negative 1. So we're just going to rewrite that here. Negative infinity to negative 1. Now use parentheses always for an infinity symbol. And because we have a closed circle, this is going to contain a bracket. So it's from negative infinity to negative 1, including negative 1. Now, let's work on a different type of example. Let's go over compound inequalities. So let's say x is greater than 2, but less than or equal to 6. Write the solution on a number line and describe it using interval notation. 
So let's start with 0. 2 is to the right of 0. And 6 is to the right of 2. So x is greater than 2, but not equal to it. So we need to use an open circle. And should we use an open circle on 6 or a closed circle? What would you say? It's less than or equal to 6. So we're going to use a closed circle at 6. Because it's less than 6, we need to shade to the left. But because it's greater than 2, we need to shade to the right. Therefore, we have to shade between 2 and 6. Now, how can we represent the solution in interval notation? So the left side has a 2, the right side has a 6. So it's going to be 2 comma 6. But we have an open circle here, and we have a closed circle on the right side. So for an open circle, use parentheses. For a closed circle, use a bracket. So this is the answer, 2 to 6. That's how you can represent it using interval notation. Now, let's try another example. Let's say that x is greater than or equal to negative 3, but it's less than 4. Feel free to pause the video. Try that problem. So negative 3 is to the left of 0, and 4 is to the right of it. So we're going to have a closed circle at negative 3, but an open circle at 4. So it's greater than negative 3, but less than 4. So we're going to shade to the right of negative 3, but to the left of 4. So it's between these two. In interval notation, the answer is going to be negative 3, comma 4. We're going to start from the left and end on the right. Now we have a closed circle here, so this is going to be a bracket. And this is an open circle, so we need parentheses. So that's the answer, negative 3 to 4. Now here's another example for you. Let's say that x is less than negative 2, or x is greater than or equal to 5. Try that one. So let's start with a number line. So let's put 0, negative 2 is on the left, 5 is on the right, and then Let's put our infinity symbols. Now, x is less than negative 2. So we're going to have an open circle, but because it's less than, we're going to shade to the left. Or x can be equal to or greater than 5. So therefore, we have a closed circle, but because it's greater than, we're going to shade to the right. Now, how can we represent this particular solution using interval notation? So let's start from left to right. So let's focus on the left side. On the left of that portion, we have negative infinity, and then we have negative 2. Now, with infinity, you should always use a parenthesis symbol. And because we have an open circle, there's going to be a parenthesis associated with negative 2. Now, to jump from this section all the way to that section, and to skip everything in the middle, we need to use a union symbol to connect these two together. Now, it includes 5. We have a closed circle at 5. So therefore, we need to use brackets for 5. And then for infinity, we're going to use an open circle. So you can literally see the numbers that you need to use in interval notation. But if you have two separated parts, connect them with a union symbol. And so this is the answer. It's negative infinity to negative 2 union 5 to infinity. Now let's try one more example. Let's say that x is less than or equal to 1, or x is greater than 2. So based on the last example, you could try this one. So we have 0, 1, and 2, and positive infinity and negative infinity. So first, x is equal to or less than 1, so we need to shade to the left, but x is greater than 2, so we need an open circle, but we're going to shade to the right. Now, we're going to have the stuff negative infinity, 1, 2, and infinity. So let's start from the left side. So negative infinity with parentheses to 1, and this is a closed circle, so we're going to use brackets and then union 
2, it's an open circle, so we need to use parentheses to positive infinity, using parentheses. And that's it. So negative infinity to 1, union 2 to infinity. So now you know how to represent a solution in interval notation. And the best thing to do is to graph the solution on a number line, because at that point, you can clearly see what the answer should be in interval notation. So thanks again for watching.